Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomus Biology. And in this video lecture, we are going to talk about cytokines and chemokines of the immune system. What are cytokines? What are chemokines? The definition of cytokines and chemokines. We are going to talk about the types of cytokines and chemokines, functions of cytokines and chemokines, and also the clinical relevance to understand cytokines and chemokines. So let's start with the cytokines first, the definition and the types of cytokines. We know cytokines are chemical factors which are produced from different type of cells of our immune system and, and, and not all, always the cells of immune system but also other cells too. For example, in this picture you can see the cytokine can be produced from lymphocyte, macrophage, granulocyte, mast cell, fibroblast and endothelial cells too. So, uh, by definition, cytokines are small proteins regulating immunity, inflammation and hematopoiesis that is the generation of blood cells in the body. So, that is the role of uh, cytokines, very small proteins that regulates our immune system, inflammatory response as well as the hematopoiesis. Types of cytokines are interleukins. Whenever we say cytokines, the only name that always pop in our mind is interleukins or IELs. Interleukins, they have different uh, names, different categories. Interleukin 2, interleukin 4, interleukin 6, 5, 10, 13. There are different varieties. And there are interferons, also a part of cytokines. Interferon alpha, interferon beta, interferon gamma. IFN is the short form for interferon. Interferons are also a type of cytokines. Then there is tumor necrosis factor or TNF. Example TNF alpha is another example of cytokine. Colony stimulating factor CSF, granulocyte colony stimulating factor GCSF, monocyte colony st stimulating factor MCSF. Next is transforming growth factor TGF, TGF beta for example also comes under cytokine. So these are all cytokines. Remember, it's not only interleukin, but it is interferons, it is tumor necrosis factor, it is colony stimulating factors, it is transforming growth factors. All small proteins comes under the umbrella of cytokines. Next is the chemokine. The definition of chemokine is a subset of cytokines regulating immune cell migration. Now, cytokines are bigger in dimension, where Chemokines are part of the cytokine. So basically, if you look at this umbrella approach, then bigger umbrella is a cytokine and some portion of that will be chemokine. On in the other way, we can say is that all chemokines are cytokines, but all cytokines are not chemokines. Okay, Because among cytokines, those factors, those proteins regulate immune cell migration will be termed as chemokines because chemokines role is to in, enhance and, and, and present an uh, chemotaxis mechanism. Chemotaxis is a mechanism through which uh, cells or immune system cells can migrate from one location to the other uh, in response to the chemical factors. So let's say this is a chemical factor being released from this injured tissue here and this cell let's say it's a T cell is moving towards that particular chemical. So this chemical is driving T cells migration. So it will be termed as a chemokine. Okay. So the types of chemokine, CC chemokines, the CCL2, CCL11, uh, these are all examples of chemokines. CXC chemokines, CXCL8, CXCL12 are examples of CXC chemokines, CX3C chemokines, CX3CL1 for example is also known as chemokine and they also have different names for example the CXCL8 is also known as IL8 or interleukin 8. On the other hand CX3CL1 is also known as fractaline, fractal kine okay fractal kine is uh, the name and CCL11 is known as eotaxin okay these are all different types of chemo Kinds. Then there is C chemokines. XCL1 is an example of C uh, chemokines. Okay, and it is also known as lympho lymphotactin. Okay, so these are all examples of chemokines. So remember, most of the times students generally interchange the name of cytokines and chemokines, but in reality, cytokine is much bigger. It has interleukins. It has transforming growth factor. It has tumor necrosis factor. 
uh, and uh, it has uh, the interferon, so much things together. But in chemokines, there are only few things, CC chemokine, CXC type, CX3C type and C chemokine types, okay. Now the functions of cytokines is that the immune activation, okay. So interleukin 2 and interferon gamma is very important cytokines that can cause immune activation that helps in the crosstalk between innate part of the immunity to the adaptive part of the immunity between the cells of the immune system they can uh, range they can they can provide a contact between the cells that is one thing cellular communication i already mentioned that between the cells they have intercell connection and communication they require this chemical messengers interleukin 12 acts as a signal between the antigen presenting cells and T cell. For example, macrophage is an antigen presenting cell and T helper cell is, uh, let's say naive T cell is connected to the macrophage. In that case, that interaction between macrophage and T cell, there is a signaling molecule that is interleukin 12 that act as a cellular communication device. Next is inflammation regulation. That is another function of uh, cytokines. There are pro-inflammatory cytokines that cause inflammatory response that enhances the inflammatory response example il1 il6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha these three comes under the pro-inflammatory cytokine next is anti-inflammatory cytokine there are certain chemical factors that can inhibit the inflammatory response interleukin 10 and tgf beta comes under anti-inflammatory cytokines Next is antiviral and anti-tumor responses. Cytokines can also provide antiviral or anti-tumor response. So type 1 interferons inhibit the viral uh, replication. And TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha induces apoptosis in tumor cells. So the job of cytokines not only uh, to provide the inflammation, inflammatory response or enhance the inflammatory response or deregulate the inflammatory response but also uh, to inhibit the viral replication and also can initiate the process of apoptosis okay and tissue repair tumor necrosis factor beta involved in the process of tissue repair where tumor necrosis factor alpha involved in the apoptosis induction and apoptosis induction in the tumor cells okay functions of chemokines now a direct leukocyte migration to site of infection and inflammation is the primary function of chemokines. I already mentioned that. So there is a tissue that is under damage releasing some chemical factors like these chemokines and in response to the chemokine, the immune system cells start migrating towards that uh, affected tissue. Okay. So the organized immune cells in the lymphoid tissue and enhance immune cell activation and effector functions of the immune system. Now the example is that CXCL8 also known as interleukin 8 that recruits neutrophils to the area area of damage or area of infection area of inflammation. CCL2 or MCP1 recruits monocytes and dendritic cell to the area of infection. This is the example of when and how the chemokines act. Cytokine and chemokine interactions. Now it's time to talk about both cytokines and chemokines together, how they interact, how they interplay. Now, during infection, pathogens trigger cytokine release, that is the release of interleukin 12, interferon gamma, and chemokine production, that is CXCL8 production, CXCL8, which is also known as interleukin 8. So the production of all these interleukins, interferon, and these chemokines increase during infection. In allergic response, interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 promote IgE production which causes the primary antibody mediated allergy, okay. And CCL-11 uh, CCL uh, recruits eosinophils in the spot of allergy and if you already have gone through the eosinophil video, you know that eosinophils role is not only to kill the worms in the body but also to properly provide an allergic response, so yes. CCL11 recruits eosinophils in case of allergy and interleukin 4 and interleukin 13 of cytokines promote IgE or antibody E production. Chronic inflammation is another situation where both cytokines and chemokines are found where tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 6 and CCL2 from the chemokine drive tissue damage and fibrosis. Tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 6 from the cytokine and CCL2 is from the chemokine that drive the tissue damage and fibrosis which is very important and crucial at that time. So that's when 
all these cytokines and chemokines interact with each other. Clinical relevance, therapeutic targets. So anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha is used. Okay, so tumor necrosis factor is there, always present in the surface, they, they, they're being released. And we use anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha in rheumatoid arthritis or in Crohn's disease, which are autoimmune disorders. So we target tumor necrosis factor alpha to block the release of tumor necrosis factor alpha, not to show any impact of tumor necrosis factor alpha that actually cause our immune system to remain calm and not to overdo its job and not to cause autoimmune disorders such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease. Next is the interleukin-6 inhibitors are used again in case of autoimmune diseases because in uh, for our immune system to function properly we need interleukin-6, we need tumor necrosis factor alpha and we targetedly go against these compounds so that uh, we can prevent the autoimmune response. Chemokine receptor antagonists are also used in HIV as well as in case of cancer because uh, there are chemokine secretor and chemokine receptors are also there, right? So if it's a cell, it has a chemokine receptor and once the chemokine is there and bind to the receptor, then the signaling begins. So if we can prevent this signaling and how do we prevent this signaling by blocking uh, this receptor by some anti chemokine or, or you can say chemokine receptor antagonists they block the receptor so that the signaling is not possible thus the cell proper proliferation and growth is not possible in case of cancer as well as in case of HIV. Diagnostic purpose is another place where we use cytokines and chemokines. Elevated levels of interleukin 6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha indicate sepsis in the body okay sepsis. Uh, sepsis is a condition, a life-threatening condition. When there is TN, tumor necrosis factor alpha found in your bloodstream and interleukin-6 in very high concentration, that indicates sepsis. We can easily get this. In vaccines, cytokines like interleukin-12 used as adjuvants to enhance the immune response when we administer a vaccine. Because sometimes when you put the vaccine in, it is not good enough to elicit the response at the, at the beginning, but along with interleukin-12, because it's a part of our regular immune uh, responses and regular immune system pathways, then interleukin-12 acting as an adjuvant can enhance the immune responses in our body. So now the summary says the cytokines and chemokines are critical for regulating immune responses. Second one is that cytokine coordinate activation and differentiation and uh, effector functions, while chemokines guide the immune cells to move to a specific site and enhance their functions. Okay, dysregulation can lead to inflammatory response, autoimmune response or chronic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, right? And there are specific regions of crosstalk between the cytokines and chemokines because chemokines comes under the umbrella of cytokines and all the chemokines are cytokines, but all the cytokines are not the chemokines here. So that's all regarding the cytokines and chemokines. I believe we have a clear idea. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this in future. Thank you.